everybody, my name is Kelly. Welcome. Today we are going to create a blush summertime centerpiece. I am working with a vessel from Accent Decor that I love. It is perfect for 60, even the larger um, round table sizes. It's nice diameter, great height, and um, we are working with a flower frog today attached in there with some clay. And I am going to get this filled with some water. If you are looking for a pretty watering can, just in case, I know in the comments somebody will probably ask, this one also comes from Accent Decor. Okay, so the elements of this design, let's talk about them. I have got this pretty hydrangea, and if you aren't growing this in your garden, you should because it matures into such a beautiful piece that you can pull from for large and small scale things in your design work. It has the pretty little uh, burgundy petals on it and I am going to use this to get the shape of my arrangement started and I'm also going to cut some pieces super duper short to put here in the center and I love this plant because I'm going to be able to weave other flowers through it to support it the shape the goal that I'm setting out with this piece always start with a goal in mind this one I kind of want it to be a little bit more dome shaped on top with some interest underneath. I would consider this a cascading garden style centerpiece is what I'm going after. And I will show you the placement pattern on how these types of designs come together. So I'm going to just do three little pieces of the hydrangea deep inside here to create that net that I've been chatting about. If you feel like it's hard to get it in the frog, clip it so that it's more like a nail. And then I'm gonna take a piece that is about similar shape, size, weight, the whole nine yards, and I am gonna put it in. It's gonna be a triangle placement pattern. Every time you set out with a new goal, there is probably a new placement pattern that you might need to use or a different combination of placement patterns. So keep that in mind as you're working with flowers. If you are new to this, this is your first time you're tuning into a flower video, know that not every arrangement that you will make in life will have this type of placement pattern. Different patterns, different goals, different outcomes. Sedum, also a great garden plant. Coming back year after year, does well in tough conditions. It's fun texture. I'm going to put it in between each place that I put a hydrangea leaf. And naturally, with this one, two, three, one, two, three placement pattern, I'm creating balance in my arrangement. So it's not going to get super top heavy on, or super um, heavy on either side or front to back. All the weight is being distributed evenly. The color, the texture. This is a really great placement pattern to try if you are just getting started with flowers or if you've never learned a more, tailor, a more tailored style. Amaranthus, it just drips and droops right off the edges of the arrangement onto the table. Just uh, beside each piece of hydrangea that I've put in, I am going to edit this gigantically huge piece of amaranthus so that there is just a little bit of it coming down off the sides at each point. You can layer pieces on top of each other, like so for example, that one is bigger, this one's a little smaller. Um, you could do like one big and one small over here or just whatever um, combination is needed to get to the end goal of having about an even amount on all of the sides. Because I'm having to, uh, to work with different widths and even like different pieces. See how this one is really dark and this one is really light. So the color affects balance just like the actual weight of the product does. So since I'm keeping everything pretty consistent on this one, I'm gonna look for one that is more similar in color to these. I'm gonna build it with some other friends to get a similar weight and effect in the other two areas. Okay. 
It's important to get all these early pieces into the flower frog. Want to work from the outside in. So this obviously is much, much heavier than that side over there, but I can just edit out some of these pieces to bring it to balance and make it a usable piece. This little section back here, too squatty. Not balanced yet. Okay, so take a little look. This one's a little bit longer than that one. We're just gonna out goes that one since we're keeping everything even in this arrangement. So now they all kind of have a similar length. We'll give this one a little haircut as well. Okie doke. This one has too many leaves. And was up a little bit too high, so down we go. Okay, so review. Hydrangea, sedum, and your amaranthus. Working over this way. Now we're going to incorporate some flocks. And I sure do love flocks in arrangement. It is incredibly sweet and it has so many great varieties out there pinks and purples and creme brulee. I love the variation of colors in the petals. It is a smooth texture, but whenever you add, like with these hydrangeas, whenever you add the uh, speckled coloring, it gives it like an interesting visual texture. So I'm just gonna work one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, around, in and around where the hydrangea is. That's what I'll use as an anchoring point when I'm thinking about, oh, where do I go next? I'm just gonna follow the hydrangea in this placement pattern. Maybe I want some to like dip down lower over top of the amaranthus. I can always go back in for another round. When these will when these come out over top of a solid color surface. I'll show you the difference between when they're out over a hydrangea versus a solid surface, how you can see the details in their petal more clearly. When I'm clipping, clipping at an angle for the most part, just so that they have the greatest surface area to drink water from. And I am snipping off any stems that are gonna end up below the water line. All right, let's go out and tuck some of these in, spilling out over top of this solid surface so you can see how that creates A different look. Now I can still keep putting these things in my flower frog. I can also utilize the shapes of these flowers that I've put in underneath like the sedum or the branching uh, shape of the amaranthus and I can be using that as additional structure to keep everything in place.
Okay, now that I have evenly distributed my flocks, I'm gonna take some spray roses and distribute those evenly as well. Any pieces that aren't particularly beautiful, you wanna be clipping off. And um, you can, I don't know, I don't like to super duper process my flowers unless I know exactly where they're going and what's happening with them. So I will leave just a little bit on them because maybe I'm in a design where I want to utilize some of the greenery or I want just the top little bit of greenery. So that is why I will leave some on until I see like what puzzle piece does it fit in the arrangement. And I am sinking these to start pretty low and I'll bring them out as I come out, but I wanna focus on the rim of the container now. I'm getting that ready for action. People sit and they're viewing it kind of at that eye level, so it's important to make sure that at the rim of your container, you've got some nice coverage there. And we're all seeing it from a slightly different angle, so. I am hopefully not at too much of a different angle than you as you're watching on the video. We are just going to carry these through the whole piece. If this is a first time that you're watching or you're not um, familiar yet with how I teach, sometimes I teach things as a product like we can replicate this super duper fast there's an established placement pattern it's very production based and then there are other videos so I'm not sure exactly what brings you here today but I do other videos that are very um, more conceptual more okay how do we um, practice an experiment and I just kind of take you with me on that journey of experimenting with design which can be really fun too. So thank you for inviting me into your home and as a part of your life. I hope that you will know that you are always welcome at Team Flower, whether you're a professional florist or you just love flowers. We have all kinds of in-person classes and events and free weekly resources like this video that are all designed to support you in your journey with flowers. This one's called Golden Mustard. Has really pretty caramely center with a blush on the outside of the petals. And right in each of these little areas, I'm gonna make sure I get at least one of these roses. And I'm gonna use the sedum to thread the flower through and hold it in place. So every time I, every place where I have a sedum, I'm going to pop one of these in. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, have these two extra. Let's go after these next beautiful field grown garden roses from Felicia at Menagerie Flower Farm. She ships nationwide, so if you need a supplier for something so pretty like this, I'm sure she'd be happy to help you. She just sent some of these for a workshop that we hosted recently, and um, I was excited to have a few left over so I could share them with you. These came in on Tuesday. It is Saturday. And I feel like that these are holding, holding so well for a field grown. They are um, maybe just like a day and a half, two days past like the peak that I would love to have them in for event work. But they're still holding well. Not a whole lot of shattering, which is awesome. 
These are definitely more fragile than their South American counterparts. Of course, Holland grows a lot of really beautiful roses as well. So becoming familiar with as many varieties as you can as you go about your journey with flowers is always helpful in knowing what you'd like to present as product options for your clients. Or maybe you're a gardener and you love arranging things from your garden. It's great to learn about a lot of new varieties by going to um, different established gardens and getting inspiration there. One of my favorite places to go is in England at Wisley Gardens. I was just thinking about it earlier today. What a sweet, sweet place that is. And so inspirational for anyone who loves flowers. I hope that you'll all get to go there someday if you haven't been already. So these, again, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm just putting one low and one high. And now I'm gonna work on this area up here on top. Only have two of these available to work with. So whenever you're doing production pieces, you kind of have to think through budget and like, you know, you only have so many stems that you can work with. And I have two, I don't have three. What do I do to keep it balanced? You just wanna make sure that one's on one side and one's on the other side to make it, um, to keep the balance going. And then you can add a different flower and uh, keep that shape going. Gosh, these are so pretty. I love golden mustards. I'm wanting these two to, to be kind of on about the same level because I'm working to create this dome shaped piece, but to keep it nice and garden tailored versus like tight tailored, I'm doing ins and outs with the other types of flowers that I'm using at different levels so that the little bug could crawl throughout with a lot of ease. But since there's not a foliage or anything up there, uh, that is why having some like anchor points uh, can be really helpful. So you know just how far up you should continue to go. And I'm gonna let that one drape down over the side. And since I draped one down over the side over here, I'm gonna do it over here below this hydrangea and that hydrangea as well. Mm, and then these big spray ones, those will be good in the middle. Let's see if I have one more that can drape for me. As you're choosing them, it's good to choose one that's naturally always naturally already going a little bit in the direction that you are trying to go. And the goal right in here is just like fill, fill, fill at all the different levels now. flower like this one's a little bit like a little bit on the gone side they have they uh, though I will say they have fared so well I'm so impressed um, but like that one I can still use I don't have to throw it out I can just tuck it lower and bring some other things out over so that I don't lose like you know the value of that rose it's still doing a job and adding fullness and all those things, but if it just happens to shatter, then we just have, you know, petals in there, but the petals are still uh, a pretty backdrop for other flowers to be out on top of. 
All right, we are almost at the finish line here. I am again so grateful that you took the time to spend with me today and we will see you back for um, another video on teamflower.org and if you don't know about the Team Flower podcast yet, we have flourish from all over the country that we interview and share stories with and if you love flowers, that podcast is going to be something that you love and if you're like, what is a podcast? Um, I am a late adopter. Some of you are probably laughing because you're early adopters, like my husband, Jesse, but I was a late adopter. So if you have not ventured into the world of podcasts yet, I encourage you to do so. It's like a, a radio program that is tailored to your exact interests. So we only talk about uh, flowers over there, and uh, it is a fun way to spend a walk or a drive or something like that. So we will see you over there on uh, the podcast. They come out every Thursday and you can find videos and articles and all kinds of tutorials and all of those um, things, a whole big library of them over at teamflower.org slash free. Thanks for joining us today.